<laughs> oh, I'm belly laughing right now. Absolutely belly laughing. <laughs> oh, man. Washed up offense, huh? Really? You think so? No, I don't want to hear that for the rest of this season. And normally I'm not this arrogant on this show, but I mean, come on. I have to pay disrespect to the haters just a little bit now, right? I mean, come on. Uh, washed up offense. This offense is not as good. It's predictable. Uh, I could. I, I know what they're going to run five plays in advance. This offense sucks. Yeah. 77.763 yards of total offense. Yeah, guys, we suck. I told you guys not to worry about this offense. This offense was going to come. This offense was going to start firing on all cylinders. And it absolutely did that today. Um, and again, I'm not trying to disrespect Toledo here. It's just funny. Washed up offense. Oh, man, it gets me every single time. Welcome back, guys, to my series, Ohio State Fan Reaction 2022 season. This was game number three. The Buckeyes blow out Toledo, and the offense resurges back to form. A lot of people were starting to question this Ohio State offense. And, okay, is this offense really as good as it was last year? Uh, short answer, yeah. And it could be even better. We did not have Jackson Smith and Jigba for most of this game. I'll talk about that a little bit later on why I think that is. Because he seemingly was healthy and ready to go today. I'll talk more about that later. But, I mean, yeah. I mean, come on. If you're someone out there that was saying Ohio State has a washed-up offense, man, get that out of here. I don't ever want to hear that again this season. 77 points, 763 yards of total offense. This offense was dynamic tonight. CJ Stroud, 22 of 27, 367 yards, five touchdowns, and some insane throws from CJ tonight. People were questioning this offense. People were questioning whether or not CJ Stroud was that guy that he was last year. And I think he proved tonight that he is still that guy that he was last year. People were starting to say that, oh, this looks like the C.J. Stroud at the beginning of last season. And in ways it kind of did, um, but in other ways it didn't. And especially tonight, I think C.J. Stroud especially showed that, hey, re remember how good I was at the end of last year? Yeah, that's me, baby. That is who you're getting out of C.J. Stroud. And he showed that tonight. We had our first 100-yard rusher of the season, and no, it wasn't Travion Henderson. No, it wasn't Mayan Williams. How about the true freshman Dallin Hayden getting a 100-yard game? 17 carries for 108 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Dallin Hayden was great tonight. I loved what I saw from Dallin Hayden. Now, Travion went down with an injury, had four carries, 19 yards, and a touchdown, and then didn't come in for the rest of the game. I believe that was on the first or second drive, uh, something like that. First drive, I'm actually pretty sure it was. So um, uh, the, that's worrisome. For a team that already lost Evan Pryor um, to a season-ending knee injury, Evan Pryor was going to be our third-string running back coming into this year. Um, we can't afford to lose Trayvon Henderson, who's one of the best backs in America. Now, Dallin Hayden tonight would show you that we can afford it. But against some of these teams that have better defenses coming up, look at the schedule down there. Wisconsin, Iowa. Penn State is down there down the line. Even a team like Michigan can challenge Ohio State defensively as well. Um, hopefully it's nothing super serious for Travion Henderson. No injury designation as of recording this video, but we'll see what happens with Travion, right? Mayan Williams, I thought, had a good game. 10 carries, 77 yards. Mayan Williams is starting to remind me of a guy that Ohio State fans are going to be uh, familiar with by the name of Carlos Hyde. I mean, he's just a bowling ball of a human being. Does not go down. The only difference between him and Hyde, he's he's got some speed. Uh, Mayan Williams can fly. So uh, I, I've loved what I've seen from Mayan Williams so far this season. He has what it takes to be a number one running back for this team if, say, Henderson is hurt for the next couple of weeks. So I'm not necessarily worried about that. But hopefully, um, for the, the, the team's sake, Trevion can get back, get healthy, because I, I do think he's one of the best running backs in the Big Ten, probably the best running back in the Big Ten and uh, one of the best running backs in America. So hopefully Travion can get healthy uh, and get back to playing some good football for Ohio State. The receiving core, talk about them for a little bit. Egbuka continues to ball out. Seven catches, 116 yards, and a touchdown. Marvin Harrison continues to do what he does. Six catches, 102 yards, two touchdowns. And Jane Ballard showing up for Ohio State today. Again, kind of put him in late 
uh, but four catches, 113 yards, and a touchdown, including a 72-yard touchdown pass. So kind of an inflated stat line there, but still a 100-yard receiving game. Had a 72-yard touchdown catch. Jane Ballard, a good depth piece to this Ohio State uh, room. Uh, Cade Stover had 83 yards today. Julian Fleming came back for Ohio State today. Only three catches for 23 yards, but how about two touchdowns for the Buckeyes? C.J. Stroud throwing some very nice passes for him today. And Jackson Smith and Jigba. Let's talk about Jackson for a little bit because Ohio State fans may be starting to grow a little bit concerned. He had two catches for 33 yards. That was the extent to his day. I don't know if it's because Jackson Smith and Jigba was not fully 100% today or if they were just being cautious. I'm going to go the optimistic route and say they were just being cautious. We had this game in hand and why risk the injury to Jackson Smith, right? So I'm not quite sure what's going on with Jackson Smith and Jigba right now. Maybe he re-aggravated the hamstring injury. Whatever he did, I hope that Jackson Smith and Jigba is good and ready to go by the time that we have to play Wisconsin next week. It's a primetime game. It's on ABC. And uh, I have a feeling it's going to be a test for this Ohio State team, and I'll preview that matchup more here in a little bit. But uh, receiving core, even without Jackson Smith and Jigba, look, we hang 77, 763 yards of total offense. C.J. Stroud dropping dimes. It doesn't matter who is catching passes out there. You and I could go catch passes out there, and C.J. Stroud would still throw as good. Um, he's he's finding guys uh, who may not even be open. Other A lot of other quarterbacks wouldn't make some of the throws that C.J. Stroud is making. Uh, this is a very, very good offense here with Ohio State. Again, washed up. Yeah, okay. Um, let's see, what else do I want to touch on? Oh, um, so yeah, uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba, hopefully he's healthy. Hopefully he is fully 100% ready to go. It sounded like he was going to play in this game. And I'm going to go the optimistic route and say that, well, they were kind of limiting him. Um, they were really kind of just, you, you know, testing the water, see what he could do, and then taking him off the field. That's what I'm hoping happened. I'm hoping he didn't re-aggravate that hamstring injury or aggravate something else. Hopefully he's good and ready to go next week against the Wisconsin Badgers. That is what I'm hoping for. We'll see if that is the case. Again, no real true report on what Jackson Smith and Jigba uh, is up to at this point. I mean, for, for the time that he played, I mean, Jackson Smith and Jigba was good. C.J. Stroud hit him on routes. It just didn't play a lot. So we'll see what that ends up leading to for this Ohio State team. I don't think it's anything major. That's the way it's sounding as of right now. But again, no injury designation. I'm literally recording this. The game is not even final yet. And now the game has just gone final, right? So, I mean, yeah. So, um, let's, oh, man. Uh, the, the, the Washed up offense. Guys, it gets me every single time. Gets me every time. Oh, man. Um, I want to talk about Toledo for a second, and then we'll jump into Ohio State because this, this actually will segue nicely. So, Toledo's offense. Um, Daquan Finn. What a quarterback. Uh, the, the announcers calling this game said that he made a play that was like Johnny Manziel 2.0. And, well, he probably won't get the national recognition that Johnny Manziel did when he was playing college football, right? Johnny football. Um, but Daquan Finn was a quarterback coming into this game that worried me a little bit. I knew about his dual threat ability, and I wondered how Ohio State was going to defend that. Well, moving forward, I think Daquan Finn has given some good tape for this Ohio State defense to look at. Now, Daquan Finn, only 10 of 19, 153 passing yards. We made him throw some dangerous balls, including forcing our first and second turnovers of this game here. In fact, the second turnover, uh, Gleason, the quarterback, was in there, and the ball just got knocked out of his hands. Fumble recovered. Ohio State going the other way. But um, first interception, first fumble recovery of the year for Ohio State, so now the defense is starting to turn the football over. That's some very good news in the end. We'll talk about the defense more in a little bit, but Daquan Finn, what a player, what a guy. Um, he he really made this Ohio State defense worry about his scrambling abilities. Had seven carries for 70 yards and a touchdown that I believe was like 23 yards or something like that. So Daquan Finn, I think, has given this Ohio State defense some very, very good tape. And all respect to Toledo. I like watching Toledo, and they're a team that can go win the Mid-American Conference this year. And Toledo did not necessarily play bad today. 
it's just an unfair matchup when you have to go up against an Ohio State offense that is this lethal and this dangerous. Um, so for Toledo, I wish them nothing but the best moving forward. Hopefully this is the team that can go win the Mid-American Conference. I think they're very much capable of doing so. And um, Daquan Finn, not going to get the national recognition that some quarterbacks will, but I mean, what a player. What a player he is. Um, I think he's going to have some pretty impressive stats moving forward this season. Segwaying into the defense. I did not play bad today. Um, it actually played pretty good today. Again, we were hitting those uh, running gaps. Besides accounting for the um, Daquan Finn situation, this team only allowed uh, some quick math here. Oh, 54 yards of rushing. That's it. That's all we allowed besides Daquan Finn. Of course, when you factor Daquan Finn's numbers in there, it's 124 yards of rushing. But without Daquan Finn, on 26 carries, 54 yards. Yeah, th this Ohio State defense can defend the run this year. They're hitting their gaps. I've talked about all of this before. Ohio State's run defense has improved tremendously. Now, let's go back to something I talked about last week. Limiting those big plays. It's going to come with time in the Jim Knowles system. And you guys remember how many big plays we allowed to Arkansas State last week. We did do a better job of limiting those big plays against Toledo this week. Um, but again, there were still some explosive plays for Toledo. Uh, again, they scored more points on us than Arkansas State. Take of that what you will. Toledo's a much better team than Arkansas State is, in my opinion. Um, but when you, when you look at Toledo, I mean, first drive for Toledo. Prime example. Uh, Thomas uh, Cyrus. 50-yard um, touchdown catch down the field. Beat Cameron Brown. One-on-one -on -one coverage. And uh, Daquan Finn was able to drop a beautiful dime, beautiful pass, uh, and Toledo tied it up. And I think to a lot of people, that meant, oh, okay, Toledo's going to be in a fight here today. They're going to force o Ohio State to try to defend the big play. And, I mean, Ohio State's offense just ran away with the game. But back to this Ohio State defense, limiting the big play. It's going to come with time in this Jim Knowles system, and I'm glad we're getting exposed now rather than getting exposed against, say, a team like Penn State later down the line or a team like Michigan, some teams that can really, really hurt us on the offensive end. So um, even a team like Wisconsin is capable of taking advantage of mistakes. I know they're not a phenomenal passing offense, especially. Um, Braylon Allen's one of the best running backs in the country, though. Um, but, but again, like I've talked about, Ohio State's run defense. I'm going off a little bit of a tangent. Back to the defense today. I'll talk about the defense moving forward later. This is an Ohio State defense that I thought the secondary played a lot better. I thought Denzel Burke had a much better game than he did last week. If you remember, Denzel Burke kind of had a very off day against Toledo last week. So I'm very, very happy that he was able to get back on track in this game and really get back to his form. Um, speaking of the rest of this defense, I mean, the defensive line was fine. The linebackers played great. The um, secondary was really good. Uh, again, it's just limiting those big plays, right? And back to Daquan Finn now. Daquan Finn gave Ohio State some very good tape. Why? You've heard me say that a lot. Nate, why do you give Ohio State good tape? Well, I'm going to tell you why. He's giving us things to work on when we go play a quarterback, much like a Sean Clifford can do, um, much like a Peyton Thorne is capable of doing, and much like a J.J. McCarthy or Cade McNamara will do when we go play Michigan is a scrambling quarterback. Daquan Finn may be the best dual threat quarterback we play all year. That is a very strong possibility. But when I look at this tape, a lot of times when we weren't able to quite wrap up Daquan Finn in the, the backfield, I don't think we have that many sacks out of this game. Maybe one or two, but again, not really as many as we should have with as, uh, as many opportunities as we had uh, in this game. But looking at Ohio State's defense, this gives us some very strong tape to kind of work on maybe putting a linebacker there to spy the quarterback. And I'm sure that's something that Ohio State is going to work on in practice. Now, not saying that Graham Mertz next week is going to be a quarterback that's going to scramble on Ohio State. Wisconsin's very run heavy. They love to rely on Braylon Allen, Ches M Malusi, uh, those uh, running backs there. Uh, and then Graham Mertz has been solid for this team, but Wisconsin's passing offense needs to start picking it up. 
This will be another good defensive test for this Ohio State offense, as Wisconsin's one of the better defensive teams in the nation. Again, that's a primetime map matchup next week. ABC, tune into it. I think it's going to be a fun game in the, the horseshoe. Again, it's a game for Ohio State's offense to get tested yet again. We haven't really been tested since that Notre Dame game, and I know Notre Dame looks shaky. They're going to get things figured out, believe me, you. Uh, with uh, Buckner hurt, they're having to go to Drew Pine. And yes, they really did struggle against Cal today, and maybe that's the true Notre Dame that we're seeing this, uh, this year, but they played a phenomenal game against o Ohio State. This offense will be tested when we play Wisconsin in a week's time. But uh, Buckeyes get the pretty simple win here. Um, and again, don't come at me with Ohio State's offense washed up. It's not as good. Toledo is not a good football team. This is a team that can go win the Mid-American Conference. Toledo is that talented. They were picked second in the Mid-American Conference preseason poll. Uh, Daquan Finn is a quarterback that's not going to get the national recognition that he deserves. He's a very phenomenal player. We had 300-yard uh, receivers, a 100-yard rusher, and an almost 400-yard passer today. In fact, we actually had 200-yard passers because Kyle McCord came in there and threw for 115 yards. So, um, yeah, th th this, this is an offense that is starting to stride back to form, and I think we're going to find out how explosive this offense really is when we go play Wisconsin next week. Again, this was a solid Toledo defense. We're going to be facing one of the better defensive units in the entire nation when we go play Wisconsin next week, previewing that game a little bit. Again, work on that quarterback spy. Graham Mertz is not a quarterback that's going to run on us, but we have to be prepared for it, especially with um, how shaky uh, Wisconsin's passing game is. They might look at this tape and say, hey, Daquan Finn was able to do this. Graham Mertz, we're going to need you to get out of the pocket a little bit in this game. Um, and again, run defense is going to be especially important next week. Uh, because, again, Braylon Allen, Ches Malusi, some of the better running backs in the Big Ten. And uh, Braylon Allen is just amazing. One of the best running backs in the entire nation. So we'll see what Ohio State's able to do ne next week. But the Buckeyes get the 77-21 to win against Toledo to move to 3-0 on this season. This Ohio State team is, is scary, man. This defense has improved a lot. This offense is still as good as it was last year. I'm, I'm getting really excited as now Ohio State is out of non-conference play and we will move into non-conference play next week. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're an Ohio State fan, a non-Ohio State fan, whatever have you, please leave some comments down below. Subscribe to the channel. I post um, kind of analysis on my community tab every single game or not, not every single game, but every single day that there is a game on, I do analysis of the bigger games and give you guys all the scores going on around the nation. So I appreciate you guys tuning in this video. Remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. And I'll see all of you guys in the next video. Go Buckeyes. See all you guys later. Have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.